Hello everybody, welcome back. In our last episode, we wrote our very first GraphQL query using Graphical. And we learned that with GraphQL APIs, you as a developer, you can go in and you can discover all the data and functionality available without the need of reading any other documentation. In this episode, what we want to do is we want to connect a, a create React app and make first calls to a GraphQL API endpoint. So what I did in preparation here is that I called and ran npx create react app in the current working directory. And basically this bootstraps everything you need for react development. So an, the cool thing about this now is that we can yarn start and this now starts a development server. And with this, we can start writing react right away. The cool thing is that it installs all the dependencies and we really don't have to worry about anything. So now I can go in, for example, go in here and I can say hello world. And this now refreshes everything and we can start developing. Cool. So let's make the GraphQL request. So if you're building a complex app with several API endpoints, several different queries, several routes, you might want to use a library like Relay or Apollo because these GraphQL libraries optimize the queries and the requests that are going out in it. In our case, we are build, building a single page app with a single API call and with a single route, which means that I'm going to go with a window.fetch because it's an easy way to make Ajax requests. Window.fetch accepts two arguments. So the first one is the URL. And luckily, we still have graph, graphical open. So we can go in here. We can copy the URL. and We can paste it in here. So let's have a look at the URL again. So GraphQLContentful.com is Contentful's GraphQL API. Then we go Content V1. Then we defined the space already in the last episode. And remember, we added this explore path to it. So let's remove this again, because this is graphical itself, uh, which we used to preview the data. And then we keep the access token. Cool. So that looks good to me. So then we can define an HTTP method. And I'm going with a post here. And I feel you. Um, this feels weird initially, but the thing with GraphQL is that it is a way to query data, but also a way to mutate data. And you really don't want to mutate data with a GET request. This is why the majority of people in the community use POST. And I already got used to it, and you will do too. So let's define some additional HTTP headers because we're dealing with JSON here. So we're going to go content type. Uh, application uh, JSON and then we're already ready to define the HTTP body and I'm gonna JSON stringify an object here which includes a query property and this now refreshes everything and the build process is now already complaining that the query property is not defined so let's fix this so I'm gonna go here and define the query and what we really can do now is we figured everything out we need to know we can copy and paste this and we can bring it in here. I'm not really interested in the collection and the assets right now. So let's keep this query like this. And then window.fetch returns a promise, which resolves with a response object. And you have to call .json on it. And now we have some JSON, which for example, we can already log out here. So let's do JSON data. So when we now go to our React app and we open the console and the dev tools, here we already see our data available, which is pretty, pretty nice. So we didn't have to install anything else. Cool. So let's close this one out here for a second. And let's have a look at functional components now. So when you did React in the past, you might have dealt with class components and constructor functions and set state. In functional components, all these kind of things are not a thing. It is always every component is a function. It will be rendered by React and whatever is returned will make it into the application. So how do you define state in a functional components then? In React, what you can do is there are two important functions that you have to use, and it is use state, and it is use effect. And let's have a look at both um, step by step. So use state allows you to play around and define state in a functional component. So the way it works is that you can call it with an initial value and let's do a counter example here just really quickly so you have to define it with an initial value and then the return of your state is an array that you can destructure and it gives you the current state and a setter function so what we here have here right now is basically it says all right 
please react give me some state starting with zero and give me a setter function to update that. The catch here is that whenever we call set counter, this whole thing will be called again. Let me show you how that works. So we can go in here and we can define a button and we can say on click, um, then let's define a function in here. And whenever the button is clicked, what we can do is we can call set counter and we can say counter plus one. And to see that actually every something is happening, we can do lock the counter on top of it. And the button should have something in there, which like increase me, Stefan. All right, cool. So whenever we now press the button, you see that the counter is going up. And this is pretty cool by itself. But when we now open the dev tools, you also see that with every button click, let me just clear the console. Several times this function will be called. And the reason for that is that the functional component app will be called over and over again when you call something from use state. And this is not what we want to do. And this is where use effect comes into play. Use effect um, gives you the possibility to define something depending on when a component is rendered. It accepts a callback function. And now we can move this HTTP call in there. And with this, we can now define, hey, please only do this once. And because I'm giving it an array as a second argument, I'm, this is basically the counterpart to component mount. So basically what I'm saying here is, hey, component, run this call here only when the functional component was injected into the DOM. I know that use effect and use state are a little bit confusing, so I highly recommend to read the React documentation about these. They are fairly good, and I highly recommend doing that. So with this now, we um, fix the request problem. So we see here that it was locked once, and whenever we update, you see that it is not called again, which is already a good thing. But we are still dealing with a counter, so let's fix this. So I'm going to change the counter to data and set data. And instead of use state null, where with use state zero, we're going to use use state null. So no data available yet. And instead of logging JSON data, we're going to call set data. Now we have the problem that this functional component will be rendered initially with data equals to null. So let's quickly check for that. So if it's not data, return a span. Oops, span, a span. Um, with something like loading. And what we can do now is we can get rid of all this stuff and we can start locking, logging out data, person and name. And here we go. When we open the dev tools, we see that there should be one request to GraphQL. Here we go. This is the one request. It includes our one query that we just wrote and it is rendering a loading screen initially and it's showing data coming from contentful and i think that is overall pretty cool with a few lines of javascript and this is it for this episode i hope you enjoyed that and let's see what we do next see you soon